Good morning. I'm so glad to have you all here with me this morning for this children's time that we share together. Today's teaching from Jesus is such a good one, and it's a parable teaching. And Jesus taught his disciples and his followers often in, in the telling of a parable, which is like a teaching story. It's not a true story, it's not a factual story, but it's a story that he uses in order to teach a lesson about something, um, usually with regard to God's kingdom on earth and what that might look like. And today's parable tells us about a sower, a, 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 someone who had a basket of seeds and sows these seeds in all kinds of different places around the land. Some of the seed he throws on rocky ground and some of the seed he throws um, on you know, hardened pathways or concrete sidewalks, you might say. Some of the seed he throw, throws in a, in a thorny, weedy patch. Um, and some of the seed he throws in really beautiful, you know, brown soil that is rich with good fertilizer and so on and so on. So he's telling us a story about um, a gardener. And I have found out that some of you also have gardens and that, um, and that you care for those gardens in your own homes. If you have a garden and you're growing flowers or plants um, or vegetables in that garden, I would love to see if you could let us all know what kinds of things you have in your garden. And I'm going to share with you some photographs of a garden that is right here as Many of you know Gladys Garden, right here on the grounds of, of St. Luke, that is tended to by uh, David Medford and many of you. And I'm going to share with you these pictures of some of you who are tending to Gladys Garden. And you see a picture, first of all, of Hallie Anderson and Colin Beck, tending to some of those beautiful potted plants and, and flowers by watering them. And it looks like Colin might be doing a little um, tilling of the soil or weeding in one of them. And then there's another photograph here of Landon Gant, who has a big, a big water a pitcher that he's uh, feeding, watering one of the plants there uh, in Gladys' garden. And then, I learned about Judy Sims, and you can see her picture here, who is an in-resident gardener for uh, St. Luke and also a garden educator and Sunday school teacher. And Judy is quite the expert, I understand, and I think that I could probably take a lot of good lessons about gardening from all of you um, who have tended and are tending to Gladys' garden. Well, I want to share with you um, an image that I have and stays with me um, from a place that I came from in New York City where I worked in the cathedral at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And the Cathedral of St. John the Divine is a huge, huge building. It's actually two football fields in length. And it's a big church, actually. And it was built, the first stone was laid in 1892. So the cathedral is over 125 years old. But the interesting thing about the cathedral is that it is unfinished. It is absolutely unfinished. There are spires that come up both sides of the cathedral if you look at the very front of the cathedral, but one of the spires stops right here because the cathedral ran out of workers and ran out of funding to keep building it. So it is an unfinished cathedral. But in a way, I kind of like that, right? Because we're all a little bit unfinished. We're all in process, aren't we? There is a place on the side of the cathedral that very few people go where some of the stones that were supposed to help finish and build and finish the cathedral have been stored. I'm talking big stones, stones that you know, have been worked on by 
uh, craftsmen who are very good at carving in a stone and carving statues and faces in stone. And all of these stones, some of them half finished, some of them beautifully carved, are stored on the side of the cathedral. And I would walk by there a lot to get in side of the cathedral through a, a little side entrance. It was kind of a quick way for me to get into the cathedral. And I would stop and I would look at those stones some days. And there was one morning I walked by and I noticed something about those particular stones on the side of the cathedral. And I want you to look at this picture that I took. You can definitely see the stones, right? There's a lot of them. They're piled on top of each other. There's a lot more than you can see in this photograph. But I want you to notice what's happening with those stones. Do you see anything coming out of them? Remember what you're seeing. And I want to talk with you a little bit about that. All right. You noticed, I know you saw, what did you see? Can you write it down maybe on the side of our uh, Facebook page if you're watching on Facebook? What did you see growing out of those stones? S exactly right, plants, maybe a tree. They were growing out of concrete. They had found a way, those seeds had found a way to come up and shoot up through and germinate and root within those cracked spaces of the stone. And I think Jesus is teaching us in our parable today about the sower who threw seeds kind of randomly and recklessly on all kinds of different soil. I think Jesus is teaching us today that whoever we are and wherever we live and whatever we come with, we are beloved creatures of God. And we have the ability to also germinate and flourish and bloom and sprout in beautiful ways as God's beloved creations. So when I looked at my stones at the side of the cathedral and saw that little sprout, those couple of little sprouts coming up through the center of those hard rocks, I thought, ah, there's even promise for me to bloom in the way that God sees me in all of my beauty and fullness. And I think that God sends us, all of us, that message in today's parable about the sower. So thank you for joining me and thank you for letting me share with you some wonderful photographs of your friends and the place that I used to live. And I want to invite you now to share in prayer with me. Dear God, Thank you so much for um, your beloved creation, for the beauty and diversity of it, for the good soil, of course, but also thank you for the, the rocks and the weeds and for the paths that guide us and lead us home sometimes. Help us to know that wherever we are and wherever we come from, whatever we bring with us, you love us. And that love is enduring and unending and eternal. Thank you, God. Help us to remember how much you love us. Amen. Amen.